Hey everybody, it's Josh Alexander from Orange County Housing Market News. If you're returning to this show, thanks again for subscribing. I really appreciate your support. If this is the first time you've tuned into the show, this show is all about Orange County real estate. So I interview local experts, I talk about what's going on in the market, and then I'll also go over some tricks and tips for both buyers and sellers to make sure you can stay competitive while keeping yourself legally protected when you're buying or selling real estate in Orange County. So on today's show, we're going to be going into part two of how to keep yourself protected when you're trying to buy and sell a home at the same time. So if you haven't already seen part one, go back and check that episode out. It was last week and then come back to here. If you've already checked it out, great. Let's go and start getting into some of the other things you can do as a seller trying to purchase a property at the same time to keep yourself protected while also giving yourself the best shot of getting into a new place and making sure you're also making the most amount of money on your home as possible. So let's get into it. Okay, so if you remember last time we talked about the different contingencies as well as the different forms that are available to you when you're trying to buy and sell a home at the same time to give you as close to a guarantee as possible that you're gonna have that nice smooth transaction where you first sell your home, you take the funds, you buy a new home, everything lines up, you only have to move once. And you also are given that guarantee that on the selling side, I'm not fully committing to selling my home to you as a buyer until I purchase a new home. And then on the buying side, you're saying, I would love to purchase this property, but I can't fully commit until I sell my current home. So those guarantees are great to have. However, in today's very competitive environment, sometimes you aren't able to find that perfect buyer and perfect seller at the same time to give yourself that perfect transaction. So today, we're gonna to talk about a few more tools you have in your tool belt that you can use alongside those contingencies or by themselves that gives you a little bit more flexibility when you're trying to buy and sell a home at the same time. Okay, so before we dive into some of these strategies, I just wanna give you a heads up that, again, these are meant to be used alongside those contingencies that we talked about last week. However, they can be used by themselves in certain circumstances, but they don't give you as much protection and they don't give you those safeguards you have in place that the contingencies will give you that basically states that you have to be able to find a replacement property before you sell your own. So you could have a higher risk of going through and selling your house without first having some place to move into directly after. So you might be asking yourself, why would I even use these strategies then? Well, it's a very competitive market, so sometimes you have to go and take a little bit of risk to be able to do these both at the same time. But two, there are so pros to this. So the first one, when you're trying to sell your home, you are going to attract more buyers by using some of these other options. And ultimately more buyers means more offers, and more offers means you're gonna get a higher price for your home when you eventually sell it. And then on the, on the buying side, when you're trying to purchase a property, especially right now, when we're in such a hot seller's market, you do have some advantages that you wouldn't have if you have some of those contingency in place. So you are able to place more competitive offers, giving yourself a better shot at getting into the property you wanna get into if the seller is not open to some of those contingencies we talked about last time. So that's why, again, these are just part of the tool belt that you can use. You really wanna make sure you talk to your agent and go over the different strategies that you wanna use specifically based on your financial goals, based on your timeline goals, and based on your risk that you want to take. And that way you can come up together with a strategy so that you're comfortable with it moving forward and you know exactly what to expect. So that being said, let's go ahead and get into some of these strategies. So the first tool I want to go over today has to do with the selling side of the process, and it's called a pre-negotiated rent back period. So what this basically allows you to do is that you can continue to sell your home like you normally would within, let's say, a 30-day escrow window. You close escrow, but instead of having to move out of your property as soon as escrow closes, you pre-negotiate, this is before you even get into escrow with the buyer, a set amount of time and a set dollar amount that you're actually able to stay in your property and then you're renting back the property from the buyer that you sold it to. So there's a couple advantages to this. One, 
it's going to be able to attract more buyers. So those buyers that want a very specific day and they have to be out of their property or they want escrow to close on a set day, you can do that with this rent back period as well as on your side, you're able to attract more of those buyers. So hopefully the more buyers you get, the more offers you get, the higher price you get for your home. And then on the side in terms of buying a new property, you're gonna have escrow close in 30 days, which means you're gonna have that money in your account so you're able to place competitive offers on homes that you're trying to buy. You won't need to have a contingency that says I need to sell my home before I can purchase a property. So you're gonna have that advantage now. And then second, you're going to have a larger sum in your bank account. So if you need that money to be able to purchase a new property, you're able to do a large down payment and again, have more competitive offers when you're trying to buy your replacement property. And in this extremely competitive market right now, anything you can do on the buying side to give yourself a leg up from the rest of the competition is going to allow you to have a better shot of getting the home that you want to be in. So there's really only two big disadvantages of doing a rent back period. The first one being you still have a set amount of time that you need to be able to find a new property and close on that property so you have some place to move into once that rent back period ends. If you aren't able to identify and close on a property, you could find yourself in a position where you don't have any place to live and you're gonna to have to find either a short-term rental or somewhere else to live temporarily while you continue to look for your new home. The second disadvantage is you're renting back your property. So you're paying money out of your pocket that goes back to the buyer to rent the home that you're currently living in. So that's less profit that you're gonna get in the end once everything is said and done. So those are really the two biggest disadvantages. But again, it's still a great option to use either alongside with, conting with contingencies or by itself to give you a little bit longer time frame to find a replacement property. Second tool that you have in your toolbox as both a buyer and seller, again, has to do with the selling side of the transaction. And this is basically to extend escrow past its normal 30 day window. So you can instead, before you get into escrow, negotiate with the buyer to have a longer escrow period, let's say 45 or a 60 day escrow period. So the obvious advantage of this is you're giving yourself a longer time frame to be able to find a replacement property and close on that property so you have some place to live once escrow on your current home closes. The disadvantage of this, especially compared to the rent back period, is that because escrow is not closed, one, you're not gonna have those funds in your bank account to be able to make more competitive offers, and two, even after the buyer lifts all the contingencies, escrow is still not closed. So even though there's a small, small chance that escrow would fall out after all contingencies are removed, there's still that chance. Whereas with the rent back period, escrows closed, the money's in your account, and there's less issues and less risk to deal with that. Now, that being said, you can use both these strategies at the same time to give yourself as long as possible to be able to find a new property. So you could say, I do want a 45 day escrow. And then on top of that, I want two extra months to be able to rent this property back from you to be able to find a replacement property. So that gives you three and a half months from the day you go into escrow to find and close on a replacement property. And hopefully by then, you're able to identify some place and be able to get into escrow close so you have some place to move when your current escrow closes and that rent back period ends. So you can use these together to give yourself a little bit extra time to be able to go out and find that perfect house to live in while still remaining relatively safe knowing that you're giving yourself a long period of time to be able to find a property. Okay, so before we get into the last tool I wanna to talk about today that you have available when you're trying to buy and sell a home at the same time, I do briefly just wanna go over a quick example of how you can use what we talked about last week in terms of contingencies, as well as what we talked about today to give yourself the most amount of flexibility and give yourself the best shot of finding a replacement property while selling your property at the same time. So let's say you find a buyer. Now you're gonna negotiate with this buyer and because it's such a hot seller's market right now, buyers are bending over backwards more than they usually would just to get into escrow. So let's say you go through and you negotiate with this buyer, you use that seller's purchase of replacement property form, so that contingency, and you're basically telling the buyer, hey, you give me three weeks to be able to find a replacement property and get into escrow. If I can't, then I have to either back out of escrow or remove that contingency. And then on top of that, I would also like a 45 day escrow. And on top of that, 
Can I also have two more months to rent back the property if I need to, if I can't find a replacement property fast enough? Now, if you can get the buyer to agree to all three of those things, which again, is not unrealistic in this market, what you're basically doing now is setting yourself up. So the first three weeks that you're in escrow, you can now go out and almost test the market, see what's out there. If you're finding a bunch of homes that you're placing offers on and you're getting close to getting accepted and you're finding a lot of places that would work for you, you could be relatively confident that over the next, let's say three months, you're gonna be able to find, identify, and be able to buy a replacement property before all of the rent back period ends and you're forced to leave your home. So now let's say you go out there and you start looking for properties and you just can't find anything available. Inventory is low for the price range in the area you're looking for, or it just doesn't match the criteria you're looking for. You're gonna have a pretty good idea over a three week period. Am I gonna be able to find a replacement property easily or is this gonna be a very difficult task? If you find that it's gonna be a very difficult task and you're just not able to find enough inventory in terms of what you're looking for, then at that point, you can back out of escrow and kind of restart the process again, go find a new buyer. But like I said before, if you're able to find a bunch of properties, you're relatively confident that based on your criteria and your price range, you're gonna be able to find a property. Now you might feel more comfortable taking that contingency off and continuing to go through escrow. So that's just a quick example of how you can use all of these things we talked about and kind of put them all together to give yourself as a seller the most flexibility to be able to find a property on the back end, close on it, and not have to worry about trying to find someplace else to live once everything is said and done when the rent back period is over at the end of that, let's say three and a half months. Again, that was an example of just one strategy you can use. There's a hundred different ways you can fill out the forms and use these different strategies depending on the buyer, the seller, and what your goals are. So again, make sure you're going over this information with your agent so you can figure out the best plan going forward. So now I wanna talk about the last tool that you have available to you when you're trying to buy and sell a home at the same time. And it's a little bit different than everything else. So this is for homeowners that have a decent amount of equity already built up in their current house. So let's say 30% or more. And what you could do is you could take advantage of that equity by taking that equity out by doing a cash out refinance or a bridge loan of some sort. Take that money, purchase your replacement property, move into that replacement property, and then go ahead and sell your old home. This eliminates a lot of the hassle, a lot of the headaches of trying to do both and coordinate both at the same time. But again, this is definitely not a strategy for everyone. You want to make sure you're talking to your financial planners to make sure this is an option and it makes sense for you, but it can have advantages. Again, the stress is a lot less because you already purchased your new home. Right now, especially in today's market, as long as you price your home correctly, it's going to sell pretty quickly. So you know that you're not going to have to have two homes for very long, but there is always risks involved, especially if you have a mortgage on your current home, then you would have to carry two mortgages temporarily until you sold your old home. So that could be a problem if you're trying to get a loan for the new home. So again, this involves you getting a little bit more heavily involved with your financial planner, with your lender, making sure the numbers work out, but it is an option I'm seeing more and more people take advantage of because equity has been going up so dramatically over the last couple of years that a lot of people have that of equity built up in their home and are able to utilize that to make the process a little bit smoother. There are even companies out there now that get even more creative where they'll go out and purchase your property for you. You can then take that money to go out and buy a new home. At the same time, you're renting back the property from that company that purchased your home for up to a year while you're doing that. There's a company called Easy Knock that does it and a bunch of other companies that are starting to do that as well. So typically you might not get as much money for your home if you do it that way, but it gives you that flexibility to live in your current home, have the cash ready to go to be able to buy a new property and being able to do so without having to worry about coordinating both at the same time. So that is another option out there. It's something you can explore. Again, it's just one tool that you have in your tool belt and depending on your situation, it might work for you, it might not. So you definitely want to talk to your agent, your financial planner and make sure it's an option for you. So other than that, that's pretty much all I have for you today. Again, hope you found this information useful. And again, the reason I go over this is because one of the biggest things I keep hearing from sellers over and over is that yes, I wanna sell my home, but I'm scared I'm not gonna be able to find a replacement property in time before my current home closes. So this was just some information to give you all the tools that you know that are out there to make this process work for you and to give you as little stress as possible when you're trying to buy and sell a home at the same time. So with that, 
Hope you stay healthy, hope you stay happy, and I'll see you next time. Bye. If you found this podcast useful, please hit subscribe and leave a review below. I'd really appreciate it. And if you have any family or friends that want some more information about buying or selling a home or just want to stay updated on the Orange County housing market, please share it with them. It'd mean the world to me. Thanks.